Bitcoin is supposed to run on a sort of democratic process aimed at reaching a consensus. But over the last year or so, it's been increasingly hard to find any consensus about what this thing should look like. At the most basic level, the battle over Bitcoin today is about how many transactions should be running through the network. On one side, you have this camp that wants to expand the number of transactions that can go through the network so that anyone can send a transaction over the network anytime, essentially for free. On the other side, you have this camp that essentially wants to keep Bitcoin smaller in order to assure its security and the decentralization of the network. This battle has become a sort of political civil war within the Bitcoin community, where the two sides are really fighting over the fate of what this system looks like. We're moving to a potentially dangerous point with information. Today's society has less kind of freedoms of expression and freedoms of association than previous generations because the technology didn't exist and wasn't sort of archiving and collecting it all. And the conversations were happening in, in a physical environment where not everything is recorded. As things move on to the internet, there's a, sort of this default that everything's being recorded. And you also see this with the sort of reaction to Snowden's revelations that you know, things are actually much more invasive than people anticipated. And international governments are sort of hoovering everything up about all, you know, basically everybody. You don't have to have committed a crime or even be a suspicion of committed a crime. They're just recording it all just in case they ever want to go look through it. What encryption technology does is pulls the balance back a bit towards the people regaining the privacy expectations they have. As we you know, work on improving Bitcoin and scaling Bitcoin, we have to preserve those security properties. Bitcoin's security and permissionlessness depends on decentralization. So today we have these one megabyte blocks, which effectively goes to about five to seven transactions per second. And for the first seven years, it's never been a problem. But finally, now we're in their eighth year, the blocks are getting full. It's kind of like the highway. The eight lane highway is finally getting congested. So now the question is, do we impose, do we just build the 16 lane highway or 32 lane highway? You know, that gets kind of ridiculous. The simplest engineering solution is just make the block size bigger. Or maybe we impose, you know, higher throughput, more cars, but more buses, more carpooling, that kind of stuff. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a combination of both. The way I see it is not just transporting at the Bitcoin layer, but there'll be additional layers on top of Bitcoin, what we call layer two services, whether it's side chains, uh, other technologies like Lightning. So those will solve some of the capacity and transaction problems. These layer two protocols are more uh, network efficient. They, they don't broadcast transactions, they send transactions between the people involved in the payment and maybe routers. And they also improve the speed of the transaction. So the transaction can clear quite instantly. Whereas uh, Bitcoin transactions have some kind of trade-off where you know, you might get a 10 minute or 20 minute settlement time, depending on the amount of value. Part of the engineering community thinks that the, the better solution is to go with what are called off blockchain solutions, where transactions don't settle on the Bitcoin blockchain, but happen off of the Bitcoin blockchain. There's been a lot of work on that, a lot of innovation on that. I'm actually pretty excited about all of that work. It's really interesting technical work. My big disagreement has been that we should not put all of our eggs in that one basket, that we should, we should also do the dumb engineering thing and just increase the block size now because we can and because uh, there's no reason not to. The scaling advantages from layer two are much larger than uh, increasing the block size. So specifically, I would say that you know, assuming that the layer two technology pans out as people expect, it's probable that the story next year will be a different one, which is there's this enormous excess capacity. And you're saying that the debate that we're having now about scaling versus decentralizing 
Might not be a failure now. Yeah, I think that's that's my expectation. All the transactions in a block can carry a transaction fee that's paid to the miner as a bribe, essentially, to include my transaction in your block instead of somebody else's. If I have my way uh, and we have much bigger blocks, transaction fees will always be really low. But if you do the math of you know millions of transactions in a block, each paying a cent, half a cent in transaction fees, that will more than make up for that decline in the block reward. Opponents who want scaling fast or say we should make the boxes bigger and, and put in a lot of transactions. The downside is if you make the boxes really big, the blocks really big, then affects how well other people can own and distribute this global ledger. So if only a few people can keep up with the so-called big blocks, the world falls into a more centralized way of managing Bitcoin. Ideological concerns that we're, we'll end up in a place where our Bitcoin is only a tool for elites or big companies. I, I think those are, are, are are really overblown. Initially, I think there was an idea that Bitcoin could be a lot of different things, that it could be a sort of digital gold, but it could also be a new kind of PayPal where you could run transactions around the world. As time has gone on, I think it's become clear that if this system is going to expand, it can't be everything to everyone. It has to choose what it wants to be.